welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. I'm Lauren. Oh, I'm Neiman, and in today's <laughs> video, we're gonna be putting together my new office, FFT's new office, and we are going to be utilizing this lady's super, super skills on the furniture flips. But first, we've got to put up my desk, and we're gonna base everything around that. Okay, so a lot of you are probably like wondering what the heck are you talking about new office? Well, I'm not gonna go into explanation in this video, but you can check out this video to get a context on what is happening in our lives behind the scenes. And today, the desk that I'm going to be utilizing and setting up is a stand-up desk, and that brings us to our sponsor of today's video, Fazebo, who sent us over a new desk for the new office. It's an L-shaped desk. It's gonna be pretty darn snazzy. Let's get the desk set up. Ah. There we go. Here's our setup, the L-shaped desk, plus we got a desk monitor or holder. All right, y'all, we are one step closer. Now it's time to get this thing turned over, flipped over, and put to its respective spot. And it changes color and everything too. <laughs> it's so sick. And then you could like pick up the speed. <laughs> I didn't even do this one. This is sick. What? Nice Fazebo. Nice, that looks so cool. I'm gonna get some sick B-roll. Let's cue that right now. got that desk set up it is time to flip some furniture to go in Neiman's office we have been looking for like three weeks to find some of his furniture and we finally came across some bookcases but they're just not quite the aesthetic that he was hoping for for his office much like a lot of used furniture that we find on Facebook marketplace it just needs a little bit of an update so I am going to transform the to this. Let's get to step one. And here is the first step, cleaning. I am gonna take my simple green, which is a watered down just a little bit with water in a spray bottle and my rags here. And we're going to clean down all of these shelves as well as sort of disassemble everything to get ready for sanding. of the little brackets behind are just a little bit loose. So before I go any farther, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them up. When you're cleaning, it's just a great time to assess the piece a little bit, figure out what repairs you're going to have to make and different things like that. And so that's why I went ahead and started there so I wouldn't forget later. And now I'm going to rinse off the cleaner that I just used just in case there's any residue that's left behind. Okay. 
Okay, everything is clean, so we're gonna go ahead and sand it down so that we can roughen up the surface so that primer will adhere. So I am gonna be using my Surf Prep sander, and I've got a 120 grit on there to roughen up that surface, just like I said. And if you're interested in learning more about sandpaper grits, check out the link in the description, and we have a full course about that and so much more. I'm gonna get to sanding because there's a lot of surface area to cover, and I'm also going to be using my RZ mask Although I am hooked up to my vacuum dust extractor, which will help mitigate a lot of that dust in the air. If you're interested in any products, those will also be linked down below in the description. I do want to preface that these shelves have like a laminate or some sort of sticker basically to help make them look a little bit better, but it's also really smooth. The material they're made out of is particle board. Um, so I want to be really careful though not to bust through this sticker, but I do just want to roughen it up so that that primer can adhere well. Because right now if I sprayed it with primer, it would most likely just scratch right off. So that is why I am sanding just for that adherence purpose. That's gonna be a perfect spot for my sander. The whole vacuum setup right there because Neiman always gets mad at me for leaving it out like this. So now he can put it away over there. All right, now that we've got everything sanded down, we are going to go ahead and wipe back the dust that was created. Um, most of it got sucked up by the vacuum, but there's still gonna be some leftover residue behind. And it's important that you get that wiped off so that it doesn't get underneath that primer and paint um, and kind of gunk up everything. And it'll also not allow it to adhere very well. So usually I use a microfiber cloth. I don't have them over here just yet. It's We're kind of between places. So I another option to do is just grab a rag, the one, same one I cleaned with, and just dampen it a little bit. That way it has the ability to sort of just grab all of that dust as you're wiping back. If you're wanting to know why I cleaned and then sanded and then kind of have to wipe back again, the reason is because you don't want to grind down that oil and grease into the surface. Um, so you need to get it cleaned up before you sand it and potentially grind it down. That could really affect the adherence of the primer or paint that you're going to use. So that is an important thing to remember that you need to clean before you sand. All right, it is time to prime. It's prime time. So I am going to be spraying the primer today, but not in my spray gun. I am actually going to be using spray can primer. I'm using the Bullseye 123 Zinsser primer. It is water-based, um, but it also really helps with the bonding, which is really important with this laminate slick surface. So I also grabbed the gray because the color I'm going with is sort of a darker color. So I figured why, why not go a little darker darker and then a little darker as I go instead of going bright white. So just know that that is an option when you're looking around for primers. I'm gonna have my respirator on so that I don't breathe in all of the fumes, um, but we've got our setup going. I've got four cans and I'm hoping that that's not, or that that's enough. They were about eight bucks a can. So it is a bit more expensive than say the cans um, of primer that you might roll or brush on or spray with your spray gun, but sometimes the convenience is worth a little bit of extra money.
Success, and I only had to use three of those four cans that I bought. So we're in around, uh, what is it, $24 so far with the primer. So not too shabby. So I'm gonna let the primer dry a little bit and then we'll come back and sort of smooth it out. I went ahead and did the sanding in between the primer and the paint off camera, but everything's smoothed out and ready to go. We've just gotta load up my spray gun with the paint. And since these are going in Neiman's office, he obviously got to choose the color. Uh, so we went to a local spot called the Robin's Nest in Springfield, Nebraska, and they have fusion mineral paint for sale there. So we grabbed the Bayberry color, which is this beautiful olive green, kind of an army olive green. And I think that is gonna be perfect for these um, bookshelves. I grabbed two cans of it because there's a lot of surface area on the bookshelves. And I just wanted to make sure that I was going to have enough. Um, this paint is pretty thin as it is. So I am going to go ahead and load it into my spray gun without putting any water to dilute it or thin it out at first. And I'm going to test my sprayer. And if I think it needs some water, I'll put that in, but I don't want to make it too thin right off the bat. I've got my strainer here because I don't want any sort of chunkiness going into the canister here that would then clog up my spray spray gun. I always recommend that you strain your paint if you're using a sprayer. And I'm just gonna go ahead and dump this whole canister right in there. As I said, it's very thin. So this is just gonna go right through, no problem. All right, we are going to now test out the spray gun to make sure that it's flowing correctly. And then we'll get to spraying the bookshelves. The same respirator mask that I used for the spray primer. And then this is my Wagner sprayer. I'll link a similar model down below in the description. Super cheap option for spraying and it works like a charm. Good, because it's for you. shelves. Honesty hour here on FFT. You guys, I am not perfect and I still make mistakes and we learn from our mistakes. So I want to share this mistake with you so that you can learn from my mistakes and you don't make the same mistake. The mistake that I made was that I had my pressure of my spray gun way too high when the paint that I was using was very thin. So um, because the Fusion Mineral Paint is a thinner consistency than I'm used to with like a chalk paint from Dixie Belle or Lily Moon paint, I had my settings up higher so that it could push the paint out faster and more smoothly. Um, and I did adjust my settings a little bit, but I feel like I just didn't do it quite enough. And with that being said, I ended up going through two entire um, pints of the um, 
yeah, this is a pint, I'm pretty sure, yeah, of the Bayberry. And so I had to run to the store and grab one more thing of it. And I'm hoping this is going to be enough that I've got my um, settings right. I spray tested it and everything yesterday, but it just still, you know, it put a lot of paint on there. So I'm not going to harp enough, or I can never harp enough, that it's so important to just make sure you continue to test your spray pattern out. I thought mine was good, but it was just pushing too much paint out. So we're gonna hope that this is enough uh, for the bookshelves. And I'm gonna get this loaded back up, turn that spray gun power down, and we'll go from there. Still got a lot of paint left, which is great because I've still got six shelves that I've got to spray. So my method worked, turning it down just a little bit really helped me save on the amount of paint that was coming out. Here the finished pieces are these shelves. This is actually the first time I've done bookshelves now that I think about it, but I think that it totally, totally elevated the look of these. I mean, they had that like lawyer look, I don't know, that like executive office look to them. And we really just wanted to kind of I mean, I know that that's like an upscale thing to be, but we wanted to upscale these. They really kind of looked cheap. And so just painting them with this green paint, I feel upscale them a lot and just made them look a lot more expensive. Um, I think we're right around $300 in with the cost of the shelves and then the um, actual cost of the materials. I'm totally okay with that. Um, I love the way that they look, but we've got to get a stamp of approval from the person who I flipped these for. So let's bring Neiman in and see what he thinks. <laughs> Come look. Dang. Those look good. I love that green. That green turned out like exactly what I wanted it to be. The finish is crazy smooth. What do you do this for a living or something? <laughs> This is probably the best that it'll ever look, so thank you, and I'll try to keep it this nice looking, but no promises. Forget I even had half of these cameras. These don't even look like the same bookshelves. I went from wanting to be a lawyer to now I'm a, a creative. So I like how the desk works with the green, for sure. Um, what bugs me now is just the walls, so I'm gonna try to cover up as much of the walls with like whiteboards, with art, with Whatever just sparks my eye when I come across it. We'll put some plants. There's like these little, oh, thought there was a hook there, but we'll try to hook some plants from the, from the ceiling as well. But this all is really coming together. Um, might put a dresser in this corner somewhere. So that way then storage I have for some of this stuff. Cause I have a lot more books that we'll end up putting in there. The Fazebo desk looks good. And I've been using this over the past few days too. And I just, yeah, it's the only harp I have on it. And this is just being real with you guys is, I guess I just have extra oily fingers, but just by touching the texture of this, um, there's fingerprints everywhere, but I lean on it. I sit on it. It's nice and sturdy. Uh, there's some, plenty of shelving. So thank you to Fazebo once again for sending us this lovely desk. I'm definitely going to break this bad boy in and get my fair share of use out of it. But thank you again, babe, for 
flipping those bookcases for me. They look great. Okay, awesome. We got the stamp of approval. I was a little bit nervous because he is typically my pickiest customer, but I um, adore him for that because I do want to make sure that all of my pieces are going out with the best, highest quality possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this really just enlightened you and showed you that you don't always have to get brand new furniture. I didn't look for uh, green shelving online or in any stores that we could purchase brand new but I do know that I that these are just perfect for what we needed we we made them look exactly what we wanted them to look like so I'm super pleased with them so if you like this video be sure and get subscribed down below because we have tons more content for you guys just like this where I take a piece of outdated furniture and flip it into something that looks brand new and if you want more information about how you can take old and outdated furniture and flip it give it a new life earn some profits and have some fun while doing it, then check out the link below in the description and apply to get enrolled in our course today. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you on the flip side.